Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces today. Pretty interesting stuff. First up, investment manager Guggenheim states that Bitcoin's parabolic rise becomes unsustainable. And this is what we've seen right now with the crypto market as Bitcoin has tumbled below 40K into between 31 and 32K. But the real question is, why is Guggenheim saying this now? We're going to go deep into possible manipulation and other types of prospects of what Guggenheim is potentially doing. Also, great news, 2% of of Ethereum supply is now staked in Ethereum 2.0 deposit contracts. And we're going to take a look at what's going to happen with Ethereum as time goes on and will this affect the price. Also on international news, PayPal completes GoPay acquisition, allowing the payments platform to enter China. And the real question is, what does this mean for cryptocurrency, specifically Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin, as they are on the PayPal payment system? And finally, in a cautionary tale, it's not how much you make, it is how much you keep. This is a great story of a crypto user loses over $100,000 in Bitcoin while transferring his wallet. And this is what you absolutely must not do. So we'll go over all that. But first, let's take a look what's going on in the markets. So today is kind of crazy. Let's just be honest. Uh, right now, it is at January 11th, 5.45 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. And we already did a video uh, earlier today where I talked about, you know, it's okay, just calm down because this is normal. These are actually, these dips that were, uh, that are occurring are something that are actually pretty much baked in to every type of uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency bull run. I'll link that video at the end, but we actually take a look at uh, different wavelengths and a uh, little TA, which I'm not really used to, but uh, it, there is a compelling argument for all the things that were happening in 2017 are repeating again in 2021, but to a lesser extent. So what do we have right now? Well, Bitcoin was down about 23 percent 24 percent somewhere around there and now it's only a measly 8.5 percent so when you look at this you see a lot of red you're like dang i don't like seeing that that sucks but i need to put it in perspective for you uh first of all uh you don't lose anything unless you sell and second of all just two weeks ago weren't we like at 20 grand and now we're at 34 35 thousand dollars and people for bitcoin now people and people are like what the heck this is a sham this whole thing, now we're in a bear market. I'm like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> These are called pullbacks. These are healthy. This is no big deal. If you're in the traditional market, I understand. And if you just came in, welcome. Uh, but 20% uh, to us is just a, a brisk morning walk on a Monday. Uh, it's not a big deal. Now, in the traditional market, you might want to you know, think about jumping out the window. But that's not how we do it here. We have ice in our veins and we're just a little bit more uh, stable than that. So just be prepared because there's going to be a lot of volatility. So Bitcoin just below 35,000. But again, it's up 10% for the week. Can't beat that. Ethereum is back over 1,000, even though it's down 15%. So pretty darn good. Tether's tether. Nobody cares. Uh, XRP, watch out. It's almost peg the quarter again. Back to my joke. Litecoin uh, down 20. I mean, let's just, I don't even know why I'm going over this. Everything's down except for El Leo. Ah, Leo. Ah, Leo. What else is up? Absolutely nothing. Avalanche. I have no idea what that is. I don't know any of these things, actually. I don't know. I don't know none of this stuff. But I will say this. As we go down, I don't like to go past the, the 50 mark. I mean, if you've seen my, my channel, I really don't pay too much attention to the up and coming type of things because I've only got so much time in the day. But there is one project that has always caught my eye and I've always uh, keep, kept tabs on it. See all these in red? We've seen nothing but red. Not red, 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 Vita. I don't know what Vita is. Uh, Voyager token. Voyager token today was up by 30%. 30% it was up. So right now it's up again. It's at 51 cents. Just so you know, it is around 118, 119 on the uh, position. And uh, it was actually like 284 just two weeks ago. And this project is hitting up massively, just like Celsius token. And in over a year, it's up 16. 1,684%. 30 day, 14 day, seven day, it's up fantastically. And even in this huge pullback, it's going up. Why? That is a question that I have put together for a video tomorrow. If you have watched my 2021 predictions, I am very conservative. Uh, Bitcoin, I said it was me about 150K. Ethereum, I said five to 10K. I didn't think it didn't make like anything wacky, crazy type of thing. Uh, Polkadot, I said, you know, uh, maybe 25, 50, somewhere around there. And everything was pretty conservative, except for this one. And there's a reason why I put Voyager at $30. And you can watch that video, I'll link at the end, but I will go into detail as to why 
this token, which is attached to the Voyager brokerage account, which is like the hotels.com, and why it's going to be massive this year. Not only massive, massive upon massive. And I'll break it down later. But that is what is going on in the market. So let's jump into today's top stories. First up, uh, Guggenheim. So this was pretty interesting because I remember this guy came on, the uh, CTO, uh, Scott Menard. He was the global chief investment officer, excuse me. And uh, he came on to I, one of the uh, one of the rags, CNBC, CNBC. I don't know which one it was, but he said that uh, Bitcoin was going to go to four hundred thousand, and it just blew everybody away. They're like, "What?" And when when he was there, he said, "Yeah, we've already allocated funds to purchase Bitcoin, uh, but we're just waiting for some regulation clarity, and we're looking at ten thousand and you know maybe twenty thousand. And I think what happened is that they they got cut short because this was. Uh, I should really read the article, but. In the actual presentation or when he was talking to these people, it was in December. And they didn't, I don't think they thought that it would go up to 40,000 like this. And I think what he's saying here is like, whoa, this went up too fast. We need to pull this train back. So uh, Scott Menard, C CIO, um, they've got 230 billion assets under management. So they're not some small time fry company. Uh, he put out a tweet. He said, Bitcoin's parabolic rise is unsustainable in the near term, which is pretty interesting to note. Near term, we're talking about like, it could be weeks, could be months. He's not talking about one, five, 10 years. Um, the the rate at which it goes up, he's already said it's going to 400,000. And it's going to go to that very fast. But uh, near term, that's what he's talking about. It is vulnerable, vulnerable to a setback. The target technical upside of 35,000 has been exceeded. Time to take some money off the table. And that's the interesting part. Because when he said this, this was on Sunday night. And what happened on, well, today, Monday, it dropped uh, dramatically. And now we're at 35000 So pretty interesting type of thing. So you can look at it two ways. And that, and I'm going to go into that right now. One way you can look at it is how these Twitter people or Twitter posts said it. They said, hey, take some take some off of the table so you can scoop up some cheap coin. Nah, said one person. You're not getting my Bitcoin. Nice try. And a third one said, you must be new to Bitcoin. Another Twitter user chimed in and says, hey, everyone reading this needs to realize that Guggenheim has not even bought Bitcoin yet. They're still waiting on the approval from the SEC. Their ability to buy Grayscale Trust doesn't take into effect till January 31st. And again, when they did this, when they put out this, when they were, when, uh, when Menard was on that show and uh, he was saying, yeah, it's going to be 400,000, they didn't have the uh, full authority to actually buy any Bitcoin. So when he said that, I think maybe he shouldn't have said that because it's kind of a goofy thing if you're an investment company. Don't you really want to buy low and then sell high? So that's kind of what happened. But w here we are, and uh, that is the truth. So they can't buy it right now. So maybe this type of uh, comment might be a little way to pull things back. And this uh, another quote from uh, Alex Kruger. Trader and economist, sure. And he says, Guggenheim's SEC filing to invest in Bitcoin to be a grayscale Bitcoin. Proposed filing would become effective January 31st. Seems Menard wants to buy 500 million in Bitcoin. And as the price runs higher, he's now telling people to take profits. And this is what it comes down to. In December, when he had when he was on, I think it was CNBC, he states, we made the decision to start allocating towards Bitcoin when Bitcoin was at 10,000. When I heard that, I thought, oh, they've already bought it. But what they've been doing is they've just been saving. Like, hey, we are going to buy it, but we need to get the uh, SEC approval first. And then he states, it's a little more challenging with the current price of 20,000. Nonetheless, Menard stressed that his firm will be buying Bitcoin, predicting that the that crypto will reach 400,000. So again, so I don't think they thought that, yeah, it's 20,000 now in December. It's, it can go up to like 22, 25. Okay, cool. We're okay with that. Just buying one at 25. At the most, they didn't see 40. And then when, you know, 40, look, it was at 42. It could have been 45 and 50. Do you think these guys really want to buy it that high? They don't want to do that. So whether he states it for a, a um, manipulation type of thing is very debatable. I don't think that you can really move the market that much if you're just one person tweeting. But who am I to know? Who am I to say? What do I know? I don't know anything. So it's just an interesting uh, concept. But uh, right now, there's a lot of people taking profits. A lot of people who, you know, one 
whale or so takes a little bit of profit one another person sees that and goes i want to take some profits then you got two big people taking profits and you got some other people get spooked and before you know it it's a chain effect this is a very small market i mean one trillion isn't that big of a market and remember bitcoin dominance is around 70 percent so 30 percent we're looking at 300 billion is all throughout the alts so we're looking at 700 billion for uh for bitcoin so it doesn't matter that there are these institutions, you know, gobbling everything up. There's still a lot of Bitcoin in the hands of people like me and you who can get spooked and can sell. Now, I would recommend you do not sell and just hold on to everything. But uh, these things happen. And uh, when people talk about stability, I'm like, no, it's going to be uh, it's going to be very volatile. And that's just how it is. Let me just in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. Next up. So 2% of Ethereum supply is now staked in Ethereum uh, 2.0 deposits. And I'm like, wow, 2%. Watch out. And uh, I don't really care about the whole art. I read the whole article. It's boring. So what it says here is data by on-chain analysis. Uh, crypto quant shows that ETH 2.0 is growing more and more decentralized, currently holding 2.29 million locked up ETH which represents 2% of the circulating supply. Watch out, that's a boatload. So here's my thoughts. Um, the more you lock up, because when you lock up Ethereum for staking, it's not like you're locking up for a day or a week. It could be years, multiple years, and that's just how it is. So that will take everything off the table and they don't have to worry about that, about we can selling. That's good for them. So I think that is one uh, positive aspect as they move towards uh, decentralization and also towards staking because right now it is all proof of work for Ethereum. Now that is great to see. I have when I read the whole technicals of how to stake, I was like, nope, not doing it. <laughs> Just I am not doing it. First of all, I'm not going to keep my Ethereum locked up that long because I'm not missing this bull run. This bull run, if you look at the cycle, it's always every four years. If I got to lock up Ethereum for two years, well, guess when I can get it out during a huge dip. Not gonna do it. So I mean, maybe if you want to, if you want to support the the uh, the network, that's fine. You know, put a little bit away. But uh, for me personally, I'm like, no, I'm not doing. It. And it's it's a pain in the a. I I, I looked at it, I'm like, no way. So if you know uh, Cardano, also you can stake it, and they have been staking 69% of its circulating supply. Let me say it again: 69% of its circulating supply is staked. Here's why. First of all, super easy to do. If you go over to danteachescrypto.com and just click on ADA staking, or if you just go right to the link, there's a link in the, in the description, it'll take you right here. If you click on uh, wallets, it'll go down here. There is a handy dandy 13 minute video and it explains exactly what staking is and how simple it is and how you can use these three wallets, boom, 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 to stake your Cardano. And I gotta tell you, it is like super duper simple. And they made it so easy that, I mean, even a caveman can do it. But seriously, I mean, it's it's uh, it's simple, it's easy. It's uh, also, you don't have anything locked up. And that is, that is a positive and a negative because one, you don't have anything locked up which is good for you, but uh, with Ethereum, as everything's locked up, that means it's off the table totally. So in that regard, positives and negatives, but however, I still think it is a positive for Cardano. And they made it, like I said, just so simple with uh, with both of the uh, wallets. And I don't know what's gonna happen with, with, with Ethereum. I mean, I think it's gonna do quite well. The problem with Ethereum is that the fees are through the roof right now, as you know, but uh, they're working on fixing that. So let's hope that actually happens. But uh, who knows, they run into uh, delays all the time. I will just say this with uh, Cardano, um, one of the big things that's hindering them is the lack of smart contract functionality. But uh, as you know, the uh, Gogan area, Gogan area, the Gogan era is, is coming about, which is going to lead to smart contracts with Cardano. And that is reported to be going to be in February 2021. That's what it says here on this article. And it says according to the roadmap. However, when I look at the roadmap, I couldn't see specifically any dates uh, for the uh, Gogan smart contract, but uh, that's just what they say. So I, it'll be interesting to see uh, which one wins. That's why I hedge my bet. I have uh, a lot into Ethereum and I have a lot into Cardano because uh, I know one's going to be great and one's going to be awesome and I don't know which one, so I hedge my bet. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. Next up, PayPal completes GoPay acquisition, only payments platform to enter China. And that's the whole thing. There's, I mean, I could read the whole article, but it's the same thing like 10 times. So this is interesting, interesting to me because uh, China's kind of anti-crypto. Let's just be honest. I mean, they're 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 pro-miner and they're pro-blockchain, 
but uh, they are not all about cryptocurrency because it competes directly with their digital yuan. So the thing that I wonder here is that if PayPal is going to be in there, I wonder if there's going to be stipulations against them where you can say, PayPal, you can come in, but you better not sell Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, or Litecoin, or anything else that you want to put on there to our citizens because we have total power. We are a communist country, and that's just how you're going to do it. It doesn't say anything about that in this entire article, which is kind of a bummer. So we are, we are led to speculation. However, I will say this. Uh, China, um, as some subscribers have told me, is an all-powering uh, entity, and they pretty much control a lot everything uh, over there. It's uh, it's uh, pretty much locked down. And they've locked it so, so much down. I don't know if you know about this, this guy, Jack Ma. He's the founder of uh, Alibaba. Multi, multi billionaire, and they made him disappear like that. And the reason was is because he gave a speech where it was pretty much anti Chinese government, and all of a sudden, gone, <laughs> just disappeared uh, for two months. And uh, I just want to just go over this little piece real quick that this is how powerful China is. Uh, this guy's multi billionaire, I mean, does whatever he wants, except in China. And uh, insiders told the Post it's highly unlikely that Ma 56 has been permanently disappeared to one of China's feared black sites reserved for the country's dissidents, nor is he in Singapore, per some rumors. So I didn't know there was like black sites, uh, but it stands the reason because it is China. So when people complain about uh, America here and there, remember where you're living uh, because there's a lot worse places. Instead, he's probably cooling his heels either at home or in a very cushy location where one expert said he may be reviewing Marxist lessons with party officials, a process called embracing supervision. Again, had no idea about that. Now you know, and now you can't unknow that. Today's financial system is the legacy of the of the industrial age, Ma declared in the now infamous speech, that's what I was talking about, that uh, pretty much poo-pooed all over the Chinese government. He states, we must set up uh, a new one for the next generation and young people. We must reform the current system. Ma's wings were abruptly clipped. He vanished from the public eye. Ant's IPO, that is his, his company, his uh, initial public offering, was canceled reportedly at the behest of the Chinese president, Xi Jinping. And China has launched an antitrust po probe into Ma's enormous company. Basically, they're making an example of this guy like, you got too big too fast and we're going to bust you down. Now, antitrust laws are also coming for uh, Facebook and Instagram, well, their subsidiary, Instagram, and also WhatsApp. So it's like it's like that doesn't happen. But to make somebody just like disappear and start to embrace, you know, uh, black sites and all that, that's crazy. So when we talk about uh, PayPal going over there, I'm like, at first, I it sounds awesome, but I just don't think they're going to allow cryptocurrency. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last piece. Last up, this was scary, and I want to bring this up because this is going to be a big year. Uh, 2021, I've always said, is going to be a big year. Uh, it's they're, 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 We're going to have peaks and valleys. We're going to have some pullbacks. We're going to have massive runs. And it's not about what you make. It is what you keep. I've already talked to somebody who has been scammed out of a large part of their uh, holdings from their atomic wallet. I'm going to have her on the show this week to explain what not to do. Basically, don't give away your mnemonic phrases. And then we have this story, which I'm like, I'm still flabbergasted after this. I'm like, who does this? So this is what happened. I don't want you to do this. So crypto user known as Onar claimed to have lost uh, 2.6 Bitcoin. And if you believe what we just talked about, Menard was talking about from, from Guggenheim, that's going to go to 400,000. You're looking at a million bucks you just lost uh, from the transfer of his wallet to a new computer acquired during the Christmas holidays. He wiped the hard disk of his, this is what's weird. He wiped the hard disk of his old computer, which he wanted to use only for work related matters. However, he didn't check the password manager. He used to store the passphrases needed to access the wallet's private keys. Owner to tell that he had already encrypted backups of his private keys on two USB drives stored in separate locations. He then plugged one of the USB drives into the computer to verify everything was working, and it didn't work. <laughs> That's what it was. Although the crypto user admitted that a alleged, alleged device would be more convenient than the way he was doing it, he believed it was, wasn't unsafe. And he talks about some more stuff, but basically he said, hey, it's my fault. I screwed up. So this is the thing. Password managers and putting things somewhere else and putting them on your phone or putting it in your hard drive is dumb. Don't do that. I mean, you can encrypt it and go through all this stuff, but if you're really tactical, do whatever you want to do. Me personally, what I do is I write them down in this thing called a stone book. If you haven't seen this, I'm sure you have. You've been on my site. 
Uh, this is what I write down all my mnemonic phrases. It's a very simple book. It's made from stone. So it will last a lifetime. We'll find out. Tear, oil, water resistance, and it actually saves everything. You can use this cool James Bond pen, and it's pretty cool. I just like because it's all right there. And if you know my story, I lost 20,000 Cardano recently because I had them on. I had I had all my my mnemonic phrases on different slips of paper that I put. I, I thought I put it in, in the right place, and uh, just wasn't there. So <laughs> it's gone. So that sucks. Uh, but this this happened, uh, you know, back in the back last year um, and that's just how it is so i actually have two shield folios uh, i have one here one is my safety deposit box so if my like my home burns down or something like that i've got a backup but if you want something like that uh dan users get 20 percent off it's in the description below and that is it so that is it for today i know it was a little bit uh, longer side for the news but uh, i just want you to remember a couple of things first of all this is going to be a big year uh, we are prone to pullbacks uh, between 20 and 30 percent. And uh, if you believe in the four year cycles and where things are going, then uh, this is a much different year. This isn't 2017 where everything was built on hopes, dreams, and vaporware and white papers. This is a lot different. I think it's going to be a big year. And uh, that's uh, really all I got. So thanks for watching. If you like these types of videos, I mean, two months going to pop up on your left and right. Not for sure. Let YouTube do their magic. And that's all. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.